might want to detect the port, something like that. And that's why you get a string and convert it to an integer. So that's that. Then you want to set up what type of um, socket it is. So socket descriptor, well, you're setting the socket family and it equals AF underscore INET. That, mean, that makes it an IPv4 protocol. You can make IPv6 protocol, but most of the time it doesn't work and it doesn't work on a lot of systems. And I'm not going to show you on this, um, on this, in this tutorial. Okay, so the next part is we want to actually start up the server. Um, you can see here, server startup, we're setting the uh, number of um, players, uh, which I could have made it not eight, but a variable, but anyway. And we're setting it to that socket descriptor and socket descriptor. And I forget what this one is. I'm pretty sure it just stays one. Um, anyway, okay, so you're checking if that equals Racknet started. So just to make sure it started, and then you have this message to check that it started properly. Um, but yeah, that's the startup server, startup eight, socket descriptor one. Um, simple as that. Okay, next thing you have to um, you do is you set the maximum incoming connections. It seems like you're doing it twice, but yeah, I know, you have to do it. So that'll be the maximum number of players. So actually, that could be just max play. Rather. And that, that as well, max play, instead of, that way it's what, yeah. Um, you want to set the occasional ping to true, just in case nothing's happening. You want it to ping it occasionally, check if it's there. Um, and set unreliable timeout. One second. Yeah, I've. It took. I did this a while ago, so really, I'm sorry, but I forget some things. But you know what? This whole first setting up stuff n pretty much never changes. It's always the same. You can, if you want more detail, you can look it up on Racknet. Good luck. It took me ages to figure this stuff out. All right, so. Next thing we want to do is call debug server info, which we'll call this. Uh, I'm not going to go through this. You can have a look at it. It's you don't. It's not vital. All it does is print to the screen a couple of a bit of information for debugging purposes. I really don't have the time to go through that. So server startup. Let's do that. That's what we want to do next. Um, okay, server. Uh, Server startup, and that'll call, of course, debug server. Now the server is started. That's just fantastic. We have a server. Give yourself a pat on the back. However, there's one more thing we have to do. The server's not just going to do everything. It has to every every uh, update. It has to receive packets and do something with them. So. We go back here. Our next one, after debug server info, is receive packets. Now this one's a bit strange at first. So you start off with a loop, a for loop, and you you'll see that this p equals server receive. So that's obviously a RackNet function for the Rack peer interface to receive a packet. We've defined p before as a pointer to RackNet packet type def. Um, so yeah, p equals server receive. That's our initial starting of the of the for loop. Um, and p, okay. Server deallocate packet. Okay, so until there's no more packets, you wanna keep doing this loop. And then p server receive means, okay, so the next time you go through the loop, you wanna receive again. So you keep receiving more packets, more packets, until there's none left. Now, just ignore this for now. No, don't. When you get a packet, ignore this one for now. We'll go into this one. When you get a packet, um, I'm going to teach you how to use bitstreams. I'm not going to teach you the other way too much. But anyway, you have to define the bit the bitstream. Wait, sorry, forget I said everything, anything. Just ignore this and this for now. 
I'll deal with that in a, in a later tutorial. Let's go straight to this. Packet identifier is equals get packet identifier. That is a function that copied straight off RackNet because there's no point in changing it. So go ahead and seriously just copy it. Um, basically what this does, it takes the packet, it checks if the packet has anything in it, if it, otherwise it cancels. I mean, yeah, returns 255, which is a message identifier. Otherwise, it checks if the first packet data equals ID timestamp. So basically, if there's a, a timestamp attached to the beginning of your packet, you want to strip that timestamp off so you can read the information properly. So that's what that does. It strips the timestamp off if there is one and then returns the packet back to this function as packet identifier because obviously packet identifier. And then what happens is that you get a switch case statement. So sorry, it doesn't return the packet complete. It doesn't return the packet the whole packet, it returns the ID of the message, not the ID timestamp, but the ID that comes after the timestamp, which is a message identifier, which is put into our switch case here, as you can see. And here is where each case is one of those message IDs. And so as it, you'll probably understand now from what I was saying before, that depending on the message ID, you react differently. That's what this switch cases for. So go ahead and just copy through these um, for now. I've deleted all my code because we'll go through that a bit later. So for example, when you get a new incoming connection, okay, so case ID new incoming connection, that's a default RackNet um, message ID. You're going to want to that player is going to have to spawn all the other players that are already spawned. That's something that's going to happen for, have to happen first. So, if a, a server detects a client receiving a new connection, the server will have to send to that client the information about every single other player and every networked object that you want to sync to their computer. This And then what happens is, the client will receive that with a, whatever packet identifier you define and it'll say, oh, okay, the server's given me all this information. I'm going to load that stuff because you have, so then the client will load all that stuff and then it will be able to load like, spawn itself. As you can see down here, I've, this is a custom enumeration, um, custom message ID, which I've defined here as id user packet enum plus one. id user packet enum is a default RackNet message id. If you go plus one, plus two, plus three for all the different types. I haven't put any code in, I'm gonna go over that later. The default one you use for sending chat messages. Um, you don't have to, but it's easy because then you don't have to worry about attaching a message id. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. This kind of stuff, you really have to, you have to read it through and get a feel for it. Even no matter how much I explain it, you're going to have to read through. Basically, in each one of these things, it, it says what's happened. So, ID connection banned. You are banned from this server. That's interesting because this is a server. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the client will have a, a similar, in fact, they'll have almost the same looking function called receive packets, they will just have different reactions to whatever the packets they receive are. Okay, so let's go down to the next. I explained this, get our packet identifiers. The last one is shut down server. And that's very simple. Server shut down 300. That's the time. So 0.3 of a second. And destroy the rack peer interface and free it from memory and you simply just call that at the end so what we're going to do now quickly is go to our standard thing 
we're going to receive their packets. So server receive packets. And then when we exit the game, before we terminate, we want to go server. What, what did I call it? <laughs> I forget. Shut down server. Shut, shut down server. And that's it. Now you have set up your game or whatever you call it to have networking. At the moment, it won't do anything. If you had a client, it would be able to connect to this, but the packets wouldn't really do anything besides send these messages saying they got a connection or something like here. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go through setting up a client and connecting to the server. Um, you're going to have to bear with me because there's still not going to be anything special there. You'll have to wait till the um, next one after that where we'll get into actually syncing some things, spawning some players. That gets a bit more complicated. So thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I made sense. Probably not, but it's okay. You'll live. And um, catch you around. See ya.